I would like to acknowledge uh, the indigenous people who are on this land before it was colonized, before it was settled. The three fire tribes of the Anishinaabe people, the Ojibwe, the Odawa, and the Potawatomi. We do a land acknowledgement primarily to recognize that we were not the first people here. People have been oppressed, marginalized, and pushed off of their land, and we, all people, all American citizens, uh, have a responsibility to reconcile and resolve the injustice that was done in order to be a part of the healing and restoration of not only the land, but culture and society. So the rain garden is bordered uh, with pretty much construction debris that was from the former school that was at the site. And I'm gonna open up the water filter just to get any settlement that might be in the system out. And we can conveniently spray that right into the rain garden. I was hired May 2018 um, to direct what culminated in the long-term lease up to 40 years of this land. The university would like the site to essentially fulfill three goals. Goal number one is kind of state-of-the-art, premier urban agriculture research. We want to create models that can not only be replicated and emulated in Detroit, but in urban environments across the country and across the world. Anything from variety trials, soil restoration, pest management, more economic, small business, cooperative models, food preservation. This is our first research plot. Uh, essentially the whole southern portion of the site is divided into 50 by 50 foot plots, some for research, some for vegetable production. Uh, within this plot, two University of Michigan graduate students are doing a biochar research experiment. Biochar is essentially charcoal um, it's a organic material like wood that is burned in a controlled way. Dirt is made up of lots of different sized particles. Um, here there's, you know, there's a large wood chips, which is a, a coarse uh, fragment. Then you have smaller things. This is now the biochar. This is a larger fragment, larger than one millimeter. And then you have things that, you know, all this dust that these are like a mix of sand grains and smaller biochar particles, those are less than one millimeter. And so the hypothesis in this project is that those two different sizes have different functions for the receiving soil, depending on the average um, soil particle size. Aside from the urban agriculture aspect, the university simply wants to be more present and the social and uh, engagement of people of Detroit. So through Michigan State University Extension, we're offering programs in home ownership, financial management, mental health, youth mentorship, robotics, music, kind of outdoor education, outdoor recreation, archery. We wanna use the space and the land to be an attractive, aesthetically pleasing, engaging recreational space so people can come here for exercise, to walk their dogs, to find a place of respite or peace, and then hopefully be able to just walk through the site and learn on their own without having the necessarily formal or structured programs that would also be offered here. Just through my own life experiences, I have come to realize that agriculture is potentially the closest thing to a silver bullet for addressing economic, cultural, educational, uh, ecological, um, issues. So from climate change to poverty, hunger, food access, agriculture is kind of the foundation of what creates stable and vibrant societies. And we do that primarily through changing how people relate to and access food. So one of my personal goals is to just develop the space in a way that is mindful not only of how we engage the community of humans, but also how we engage the insects, the birds, the microfauna in the soil.
the fungi. We want to create a space that's literally welcoming and inclusive uh, to everyone and everything. Birds can be great pest managers, but they're also just wonderful things to look at sometimes. So, part of managing a healthy and biodiverse site is feeding the local birds. A part of the issue historically with agriculture is throughout the 20th century, it became very industrial, and that played a role in separating people from even knowing how food grows and where it comes from. So in addition to the research aspects, a part of the site being based in a neighborhood based in the city of Detroit is simply creating an opportunity for people to come and witness how corn grows, how tomatoes grow, how you harvest them, what it takes environmentally from water and carbon dioxide and sunlight and healthy soil to producing good food, as well as just transforming people's connection to a tomato is something I could grow in my yard, I could grow at my house, I could potentially grow indoors. It's not something that I have to earn money to purchase at a store or even a farmer's market. And then through transforming people's relationship with food, we're also creating space for people to share food and then saying hey I grew five tomato plants these five tomato plants gave me more tomatoes than I could eat in a day or a week and now rather than throw those things away I'm sharing this with my neighbor and I'm creating space and time and opportunities to share gifts to share time to have conversations to share knowledge it's kind of this integrated holistic approach to building community we have a lot of community support. I would say the spectrum ranges from people who say, I don't care what you guys do here, I'm just happy to see something being done here. Uh, people are excited to see activity. They're excited to see flowers and people you know, being productive, using their bodies. Just last week, I was really touched. Two kids had walked by. And they were a brother and sister, age 11 and 13. They lived three houses down. They had just come up to me and said, hey, mister, like, can we come and help you sometime? And that, you know, I think of people doing outreach for volunteer days and having to broadcast things on social media. And it's really, it's exciting, it's honorable, it's touching that, uh, that children, pretty much young teens, preteens, passing by were interested in helping out here. Like, it's not a playground, there's not video games, there's not even internet <laughs> at the site currently, and they wanted to come and put some energy into moving stuff around. For me, in five years or 10 years, I would really like to see potentially hundreds of people passing by or moving through the site on a weekly basis. Either you're coming here just to have a picnic or eat outdoors, you're coming here because you know that a certain class of interest to you has been scheduled, or you're coming here because you know that you're gonna see a monarch butterfly, or you're gonna see bees, you're gonna see hummingbirds, or something that you don't necessarily get to see either in Detroit or at your home. Um, so I'm very mindful of how not only myself, but everyone who comes here has an opportunity for stewardship, an opportunity for a substantial or meaningful experience like even just, today I went to the MSU Detroit Partnership for Food Learning and Innovation, and just being there, I felt like I was relieved of stress. Just being there, I feel like I can go home more joyful, more happy, more proud to be a, a resident in this neighborhood, to be someone who is engaged in my community. And you're coming here because something about this space gives you energy, gives you purpose, gives you meaning, and also feel like they're connected to not only their community and one another, but to Michigan State and Detroit as a whole.